Hello everybody out there. Uh, this is the title of the day for December 30th, uh, 2014. And today it's over the hive mind. And I talked about this a little bit before, but um, what I want to show today is basically, you know, like Jesus said, I say this all the time too, but you know, you're either the children of the devil, your father the devil, or God is your father, right? So it's the same way with, with your mindset. And we see um, with a hive mind you know type of thing what they're trying to do now is um it's always kind of been this way to where they all try to get all of their followers to think alike right they all want them to to think alike to be alike that's why you see a lot of cults and stuff they all dress alike they all look alike because they all have this hive mind of satan right and we can also see that in in you know just society period through media and everything it's like you're putting on the image of the beast when you see a celebrity or or somebody like that and they are you know you know that they're not <laughs> with jesus and walking with god and then they uh, push their clothesline on you or shoe line or something like that they want you to even dress like them you see they want you to be like them to think like them to watch the media so that it comes into you and and that's the things that you think about and you and you are and you try to conform yourself to them but like it says in romans do not be conformed to this world right but conform yourself to jesus <laughs> so that's what i want to look at is like you basically either have the hive mind of satan or you have the hive mind of jesus okay so to start out with, let's look at the hive mind of Satan. And one of the perfect examples of this in Scripture is uh, 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4, um, in whom the God of this world, right? This world, like I've talked about before, the world with me, the way I talk about it is the cube, is is uh, Saturn, is um, um, uh, the cube, Saturn, where am I else am I missing? <laughs> Going blank. You know what I mean? The cube, okay, all that. Um, the world, but I talk about it as the world. So to me, the god of this world is Satan, and he's got uh, the god of the cube, right? The god of of all that stuff. He's got us trapped in it. Um, hath blinded. What did he blind? The minds of them which believe not. Least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them, like shine in their minds. So the he has once you're trapped in, like I made my video about explaining the cube, where you're trapped inside of the cube, the matrix. That's what I'm sorry. The matrix is is what are the other word that I was looking for. The matrix or the womb, right? The womb. Um, so sorry, I <laughs> just had to get that out. It's like drive myself crazy inside my head thinking of what word I was looking for. The matrix or the womb. Um, so anyway, <laughs> uh, it shines, Jesus shines the light into your mind. And you notice it says the glorious gospel of Christ. So the Holy Bible with the gospels, they also shine that light into your mind, right? To open you up so that you can get out of that mindset. Like in my Explaining the Cube video, I talked about how, you know, you're basically, if you're an unbeliever, you're inside of a cube, inside of a cube. You're in a prison of the body, plus you're in the prison of this world, right? So, and that's even worse. At least... If you get out of the prison of, of unbelief out of your mind, then you are set free. Even though we're still trapped inside of this prison of this world, we're st we still know we're eventually going to be free because Jesus is going to set us free, right? Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Okay, <clears throat> so also let's look at, but you see that the minds, he blinded their minds. So they're blinded, so what do they do? Like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, what did Jesus say? They're, they're just leave them alone. They're the blind leading the blind, and they're going to fall into a ditch. They're going to hell, basically is what he's saying, because they have the high mind of Satan. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 2 says this. 1 Timothy 4. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Okay, so there's seducing spirits that are coming into them, into their hearts. There's doctrines of devils that they're getting into their brain, right? And it's uh, making them think like these other people and like Satan and taking them along the path. Um, and this is very interesting, their consciences... Where does most people think your conscience comes from? Your mind. Your mind has been sheared 
uh, with a hot iron. So it's like your your mind has been so corrupted that you can't almost think for yourself. You just follow along. You just follow along and do whatever they say. You're a zombie, basically. Um, and that's what they're also trying to do with technology. They, you know, they do it with media. They do it with um, with all this other stuff. You know, subliminal uh, programming and all those kinds of things. But now they're really pushing it to where now we're gonna put computer chips in your brain. You're gonna be an art elect. You're going to be super intelligent. You're going to live. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And um, and that the microchip's going to be in you. Well, basically, that's just complete control because they'll shut you down. They can shut you down anytime they want if you step out of line. That's why it's very important for any Christian not to take the mark of the beast because it may seem very little and subtle, as Satan always works, right? It's subtle. He's the most subtle of all the, the beasts of, of the field, right? So it's going to be very subtle first. But then when, um, through time, it always changes and it, it, it gets worse and it's just a thing about control. And just like my grandfather told me, um, when the Social Security numbers came out, they promised them that they would never have to know the Social Security numbers or use them for anything but getting the Social Security when they get older. Now try to do anything without a Social Security number. You can't do it. You can't get a job. You can't do anything. You're controlled by that Social Security number. You see, so now they want to put a chip into you to control you even further. Scary, so don't do it. Um, so you see that their conscience is sheared with a hot iron. So basically, you know, they're they're controlled. We can also see that in Romans eight uh, six and seven. Uh, for for to be carnally minded is death. Okay, so to be satanically minded is death. Um, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So to have the high mind of Christ in you, then you you will have peace in your life, but you will just taste death, the second death even, you know, if you have the high mind of Satan. And verse 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Who is God? Who did God say that he was, Jesus was going to be fighting? And what were they going to have? Enmity. I'll put enmity between your seed and her seed. So the high mind of Satan has enmity against the high mind of Christ, and they're fighting each other, right? The two seeds, you see that? Um, for it is not uh, subject to the law of God, um, which is the teachings, the Torah, the instructions of God, neither uh, indeed can be. So without the Holy Ghost, you can't understand the Torah, the teachings of God, the instructions of God, the law of God. You can't understand it. So you're, you can't be... It, you, you can't be openly minded spiritually enough to grasp what is going on. And you can't have real peace in, in, in life, real life, right? Not life just on this earth, you know, but life everlasting. Okay, so that to me, speak. those verses speak to me about the high mind of Satan, okay? Um, and, you know, it also speaks about can, computers controlling you and all that stuff, like I said. Okay, so now these verses to me point to the high mind of Christ. And first, let's look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 9 through uh, 16. And it's very interesting that right before it, it says that uh, the princes of this world, Satan, fallen angels, um, and the rulers are all fall underneath that. Um, uh, they didn't understand uh, what they were doing when they crucified Jesus. Why? Because spiritually they couldn't, in their high mind, comprehend what they why they were doing it. You see it? They thought they were winning a victory, but when really they were losing it. <laughs> okay, so, let's listen. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Okay, so see... Satan, the fallen angels, and, and the kings of the world uh, didn't understand what they were doing when they crucified Christ. And it's interesting, like I said in my video about the pineal gland, that the eye has not seen. So their mind, their mind's eye couldn't understand it. They, it hasn't seen what, what's going on. Okay, and let's listen. But, thankfully, we do get to understand those things. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Right. So you see, the spirit of man 
when you have that uh, beast hive mind in you, they don't trust each other. Even though they're thinking alike in a way, they don't really trust each other. So they, they can't, you know, because I don't know what he's thinking. He don't know what I'm thinking. You know, they they don't trust each other. They're always backstabbing. They're always doing things like that. Uh, but it's interesting, the Spirit, but, but the Spirit of God knows all things, right? And searches all things. And we have the Holy Ghost in us, right? So the Holy Ghost is connecting all of us together he's in me but he's also in you and everybody else and connecting all of us together right that's the hive mind that's the that basically the holy ghost is the hive mind now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god Amen. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, so spiritually to spiritually to us, like right now I'm spiritually communicating with you about like the hive mind and all this other stuff. They don't communicate spiritually like that. Now they'll tell you, oh, they're spiritual, they have all this, and really it's not because the Holy Ghost is in, is the only thing that's really spiritual in a way. You know what I mean? Like that connects on, on the earth. Everything else is just demonic. Which I, you could say that it's 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 a, of a spirit, but it's not truly spiritual in the strength of everything, you know, like like Jesus and and God and all of that. So, but we conversate spiritually through the Holy Ghost. They are physical in their thinking, right? They're carnal in their thinking. That's why we look for a spiritual home in heaven, spiritual eternal life, uh, spiritual teachings, uh, spiritual understanding spiritual love um every you know what i mean everything like that is spiritual to us to them that's what we are looking for uh, uh like abraham was looking for a country and a town and all that that wasn't built by man's hands but by god's right in heaven is what he was looking for same thing with us they are looking for to be here physically on the earth forever with their hive mind all connected together so they're trying to live in either their physical bodies or some kind of, you know, machine bodies or something like that. You know, like, like, you know, just hybrids, all kinds of things like that. They're looking for anything that they could put their consciousness and their mind in. They're trying to find it. You know, whether it's just a computer itself, they're trying to find something to where they can say keep their consciousness here on the earth and not like go to hell, basically. <laughs> all right. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Right, why? We're not judged of any man. Why? Because Jesus is the only one who can judge us, right? Like Paul said, it's a little thing for you to be, for me to be judged by you, because I don't even judge myself. There's only one judge, and that's Jesus, so don't judge anything before it's time, right? That's what Paul wrote. Um, so there's no man that judges us, especially if we're spiritual, because only Jesus can judge us. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Okay, so you see we have the mind of Christ, and the Holy Ghost instructs us, right? And Jesus said that everything that he does and knows, he saw and, and got from the Father. And then Jesus says, I, I will. everything that the Holy Ghost tells you is me telling you it. So it's like really everything we learn is from the Father, and it comes down from Jesus, the Son, and through the Holy Ghost into us. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> so you see that that's basically the hive mind of Christ and Jesus. Um, Ephesians six seventeen, and this is very interesting because you know um, whenever I put on the armor of God in the morning, I always say I put on my helmet of salvation, and I thank Jesus for everything He did for the whole world and for everybody that's in it, and um, you know making it possible for us to go to heaven, being the Son of God, taking away our sins, all of that stuff. And I've always said that in the morning about the helmet of salvation. But when I was doing this study, I started thinking uh, and take uh, and take the helmet of salvation, okay? And I started thinking, well, why is that the helmet? And then I was thinking, oh, well, that's it because it's the mind of Christ. Because when you put on the helmet of salvation, Yeshua, you're putting Yeshua in your mind and you are you know connected so it's a hive mind thing you see that i thought that was pretty cool i was like oh that's that's awesome <laughs> okay so also um 
Luke 17, 20 through 21 says, uh, and when he, uh, oh yeah, uh, when, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered and s them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so really there is, you know, uh, the, the, the kingdom of, uh, of God, which is in us, which is everything, which to me right there, when I read that, I was like, oh, okay, I see what he's saying. It's in your mind. It's, it's, it's inside of you. You know, that's what the kingdom of God is. And you won't have to say low here, or low there, because the Holy Ghost is in you connecting all of the believers together, right? Because we, there's two different kingdoms. I made a whole video about that. I don't want to get all into that. But there's two different complete kingdoms. And one of them is the physical kingdom. And one of them is the spiritual kingdom. And, and it, you know, it engulfs everything. It's inside of us and it's all around us, right? But you see that. That's why he said, lo, you won't see it here. You won't see it there. It's inside you. It's inside your mind connecting all of us together, right? And we won't see it, see it until we're in heaven, okay? So I thought that was pretty cool, too. Um so, and then to end it, let's look at Philippians uh, 2, 1 through 6. Philippians 2. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Okay, that basically just says it there. You know, we're all supposed to be in the high mind of Christ, you know, connected. Not the high mind of the world. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Right, because we're all connected. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And that's why it makes such sense in Acts, where it's not a socialist society as a we think today to where everyone shares everything and all this other thing, because social society, somebody a, a ruling it is, is over it. But here, when... It, when when your things are my things and my things are your things, it's because we're like-minded. We are one. So it's really not your thing or my thing. It's all of our things because we're all connected. It, it makes sense. But, you know, the world, I don't think the world will ever really live like that, you know. And, and maybe in the thousand-year reign of Christ. But, you know, humans nowadays are just way too, you know, greedy. I mean, and covetedness, you know, of everything that they have. It's, they don't want to share anything, you know what I mean? It has to be theirs. They have to have their stuff. This is mine. This is mine. It belongs to me. You know what I mean? And and everybody pretty much is like that, you know, which is kind of sad, but, you know, Satan has corrupted most people to that way. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. But okay, so you see, I just think that's awesome because he keeps saying mind, 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 and and this is the stuff that Jesus did, you know, and that he even as being, you know, he was God, but yet ch chose to be like lesser than God, you know, and and chose to be everyone connected. He was connected with us too, which he still is. He's inside of us. So I think that's really cool. Okay. So I hope y'all get that, you know, the hive of mind of Satan and the hive mind of Christ. And you want to be in the hive mind of Christ, please. Okay. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Wake and watch for Yeshua. God is love and I love God. Amen.